So welcome back everybody. Today we're going to get into some of these beehives and see if we can find some honey that's ready to extract. Now I don't usually like to do this until June or July. I like to usually wait until all of the honey is ripe and ready to go so I can just do this one time. But right now I've only got about a half of a pound of honey left on my table at the house so it's, it's almost an emergency. It's time to see if we can find some honey. Also if we go ahead and extract what's already there that gives the bees an opportunity to put more honey into the empty frames that we make for them. So let's go ahead and open up some of these hives and see what we can find. So the odds are good that I won't find anything, or at least not any drawn comb on this topmost box. But we got to get it out of the way first before we can go in, 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 into any of the lower frames. There's some of them up here, but we're going to have to go lower to find anything useful. So again, not a lot going on in this box. Let's just take a frame out and see what they're doing. So you can see, I hope you can see that at least, they have got a good bit of nectar stored in these frames, but it's nowhere near capped. I believe that there might be something promising in the next box though. getting some weight to it. So they're getting real close on that frame but it's not quite done either. We'll set it to the side. Getting very close on that one but not quite. A good rule of thumb is not to take these frames. See, that's actually still got brood in it. The good rule of thumb is to not take these frames until 80% of those cappings are capped. The reason that a lot of these are still open is because what the bees do is when they bring nectar back to the hive, they have to dry that nectar down to a certain moisture content. And when it hits a certain moisture content, that's the point when it becomes honey. And if you extract, man, that is close. If you extract too much open nectar, your honey will actually end up fermenting because the moisture content is way too high. All right, see, I, I'm, I'm gonna take this frame right here, the stick in there, because that right there, I suspect, is dry enough. On this side, you're looking at 95% cap. So we'll shake the bees off of this and put this to the side. So I'm not a commercial beekeeper. And the reason that I say that is because most commercial beekeepers, they will wait, of course, and they'll take entire supers and extract entire supers at a time. I'm gonna take this one and extract just that side. The other side isn't quite ready. Mm -hmm. 
but commercial beekeepers will just take entire supers. I'm just a hobby beekeeper. I've got 10 hives and that allows me the luxury of just kind of extracting around the brood nest and you know extracting whatever I find whenever I want to. I'm going to put these back together. After we get done extracting, drone. after we get done extracting, we'll come back and put those two frames back in there. So let's move on to the next box. Well, anyway, let's, let's check the next, um, let's check the lower box first. I expect all I'll find in here is some honey, but uh, quite a bit of brood. I get a lot of people asking me why I don't wear gloves to do this. And uh, of course the second I say that I get stung on my finger. <laughs> but most of the time bees don't really sting your hands that bad only if you're jarring them around and knocking them around and making them angry will they resort to resort to that they really prefer faces and areas of areas of high contrast they like to get tangled up in hair and uh, now there's there's nothing happening on that except probably some eggs so we're not going to we're not going to deal with that box at all. Let's put it back together and move on to the next tile. lot going on in this top box. I was actually in these hives this week earlier. I probably added this hive with this box and then I'm not even sure. Maybe not. I can't remember. Man that is so close. So close to being done. I actually I think I'm probably gonna take this frame since I'm just kind of doing a mini harvest. Yeah that looks good. Since I'm doing a mini harvest and all of this honey is going to be for my own use, I'm going to go ahead and take this because they are on the verge of capping pretty much all of these frames. See these right here? Get her out of the way. See these right here? These are almost capped themselves. These are fully capped and I would, I think I'm good with taking this frame. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh yeah, that's good. Let me give you a closer look and I'll show you what I'm show you what I'm talking about here. So I hope you can see this. These frames, I'm sorry, these cells in the middle right here are fully capped. That means that honey is 100% ripe and ready to go. But if we look at the other side, there are fewer cells capped. But the bees are working actively on capping a lot of these cells. You see right in here, those cells are almost capped. I feel fine taking this frame. I would consider it a dry frame. If it was honey that I was about to go sell, uh, I would probably not do that. But since it's for my own use uh, and it's just a small amount, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Yeah, we'll take that one too. That's probably all I'm going to get out of this. Well, hang on, let's check this frame. Yeah, that one right there. That one be, would be way. Oh man, that one would be way too risky. See that that side looks. Yeah, that side doesn't look great, but that side is nowhere near ready. Let's check the next box. This wind is awful today. I hope it's not affecting the audio. I can kind of see down in there. I don't. I don't know about this box. We'll pull a couple of frames just to see though. Yeah. So they've begun to fill that in. That was actually brewed not too long ago. And you can see over here that it's hard to see. Let's, let's get a closer look and I'll show you all these, this larva and these eggs and stuff these bees make. Let's get a closer look. So this is actually a really good frame to show you all the various stages of brood rearing in a hive. So you've got capped cells all in here. Some of those are probably getting ready to hatch. Some of them are almost capped. Some of them are 
Actually, right, so I'm not sure if they're getting ready to hatch or not, but they're older brood. Then you've got larva. See the little tiny worms down in here? Then you've got even smaller stages. And then right in here, you've got eggs. And you can see, and I think with that one right in the middle, there's actually maybe three eggs in there. Now, sometimes that could denote a laying worker hive. In this case, it's not because you see all these other cells. They have one. Some of them have two in there. That could indicate that there is a queen in there that has just been mated. But I, this hive seems to have a very healthy queen. Sometimes when queens are brand new and they've just been mated, they will have trouble when they're just learning to lay eggs. But yeah, this is a good. This is a really good frame for y'all to see all this these uh these various stages of of uh, brood rearing in a hive so when i first started beekeeping i used chemical treatments in my hives and i actually marked the frames once i switched to organic i marked the ones that i used the chemical treatments in now i'm not going to extract out of this hive because that's one of the frames mm -hmm. that was used during the time that i was using chemical treatments so we're not going to extract out of that. We will leave that for the bees for winter time. Unfortunately, that appears to be a pretty solid frame. Let's look at it and see what we're missing out on here. Oh, that is a heavy, heavy frame. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Ah, that kills me that I've got to leave that. But it's all right. I'm not interested in eating pesticides. And honestly, that has probably broken down after all these years and I wouldn't expect there to be traces left but yeah, I'm not gonna eat that stuff let's put this hive back together we'll definitely take that one Tell you what, we'll take this one also. This one will be a good one. We can only extract half of it, but it'll be a good one to counterbalance the other half frame in the extractor that we got earlier. This frame is a mess. You see, they've done pretty well on this side, but they haven't done anything on this side. And probably the reason for that is this other frame over here, they've just drawn it out farther into that other frame. They kind of made a mess out of it. I've said this on my videos before, but if you're a beekeeper and you do not have one of these Maxant frame lifter tools, you should seriously consider the investment. They're not, you know, they're really not that much more expensive than standard frame uh, hive tools, but my goodness, they are so much more convenient. They fit in my hand better. They do a better job, I think, personally. I mean, that's just my opinion, but I'm telling you, they are worth it. They are well worth it. It actually started drizzling when I was in that last hive, and I'll tell you what, if it's one thing that bees hate, is to be worked in the rain, so we're kind of taking a risk here, but it's, it's slacked off. Hopefully it'll stay gone. Take that one too. So here's something, let's get close. That was a very common question that I got last year that I think I can answer with this frame right here. Let's get close and let me show you. So one of the most common questions I got on last year's honey harvesting video was why are some of these combs dark and why are some of them light? And a lot of people said, well, maybe it's because the honey is darker. And you know, I think that's actually a pretty good guess, but most commonly it's because the combs have been used for brood rearing instead of honey production, or simply they're just older. Older combs, they're not really dirty, but they're just stained because of more use. Now, this is a good example on this comb, because this frame, because we can see uh, both of the stages of, uh, of color on this. See on these edges right here, the comb on the tips, especially of these cells, is much newer, so it's nice and pretty white. But as you get towards the middle, you can see that these combs, or this wax, has been used much, much longer. This comb, I'm uh, sorry, this frame has been in use since 2014, it says on the top here. So you can see that a lot of these have gotten... Uh, a lot of these cells have seen quite a bit of use. You see how much darker these cells are than these cells? 
It's just simply the amount of use or what they have been used for, but the honey is the same either way. You see how nice and clear and light that honey is? And if we go towards the middle, it's pretty much the same color. Maybe a little bit darker. Some of this might actually be last year's honey, I'm not sure. But anyway, bottom line is the honey doesn't really affect the color of the comb. See, there we go. There's some of that nice light stuff. So I hope that, hope that helps to answer that question. Got this, oh, okay. Yeah, I see. <laughs> I see the problem here. Let's let's take this one off and I'll show you all the, the problem that I've got on this one. I don't have to take it apart. Here, here we go. Watch this. So guys, this is what happens when you when you're sloppy and you don't put all your frames in your boxes properly. Check this out. They've just pretty well made a mess out of that. They're making honey in it though. So can't ask for much more than that. I think I'll probably leave it and I can get cut comb honey out of that. Tell you what, I can't, I can't tell you how many people I get commenting on my last honey harvest video. They, they say, man, it's three o'clock in the morning. I've got a test tomorrow. I really ought to be studying. What in the world am I doing here? You know, I should probably tell you to go study and do a good job in school, but how much more educational can you get looking at honeybees, harvesting honey? You'll be the envy of your classroom. I say, I say stay up and go to bed later. Oh man, they've got a good laying pattern, a good brood pattern. Uh, really, really a beautiful, beautiful comb right here. You can't see it, but there's eggs all in here. Just gorgeous, but we're not going to get any honey out of it. But seriously, y'all go to sleep and do good in school and eat your fruits and vegetables. So we're back in the shop, guys, where we're going to go ahead and extract this honey. But here's something interesting. My honey bucket's from last year, and it's been, what, 10 months? nine months i'm not sure i guess i just left the honey in here last year that was left over now this being honey it's not going to go bad so this honey is actually still good it actually still tastes pretty good but i'm going to wash it out because it's crystallized and if you put new honey into honey that's already crystallized the whole tub is going to crystallize much faster so we don't want that let's get these cleaned up and we'll start extracting all right that's much better now we have to dry these out really well because we don't want any extra moisture in this honey.
So guys, that does it for the frames, but now we're left with all these wax cappings uh, that we cut off. Now this is certainly not waste. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. There's honey in there first, and of course there's also wax that you can use for all kinds of different things. What I like to do, there's actually a tool called a capping spinner. Uh, it, I, I don't have one, of course. They're, I'm sure they're kind of pricey. But all I do in a small scale, I mean this is just totally fine. What I do is just I take my knife and I mix this up really, really good just to kind of get all of the honey separated from the wax and kind of make it a just kind of make it a slurry I guess you could say see that's a that's a good enough consistency just like that and now I'll show you what I do with it now so my extractor is still draining here so we want to make sure to be very careful not to uh, not to have our strainer and bucket right up under this because if we lose honey, I mean, honey's precious. You don't want to lose honey. We worked hard for this and the bees worked hard for it. So you just want to move that out of the way if you're still trying to drain your extractor. And at this point, well, I guess we're going to have to move the extractor. I'm just going to tilt it back a little bit, I think, to make it stop draining or to make it slow down at least. Okay, yeah, that'll work. So now we just dump all these cappings into the strainer. And try not to let it get down in there. If it gets in there, it's not, not, like, it's a, not like it's an emergency, but it's going to keep your honey clean. So now you just let that sit. Ideally let it sit overnight and that honey will separate right out of those wax cappings and you would be really surprised at how much honey is actually actually still in there. So now we'll just put the extractor back to draining and let it sit. So it's been just a little bit over two hours at this point and this has pretty well drained out. I mean it's not, it's still fairly moist but there's a lot of, a lot of honey that has, that has drizzled through those wax cappings and through on down into the screen and it's been filtered out. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to go any farther with that. We'll take this out and uh, uh, see what we've got as far as honey goes. So let's see what we've got. This has been a very early honey harvest in my area. And really anything is good, but let's see what we've got here. 30 pounds. Let's try that again. Yeah. About 30 pounds. We can subtract maybe a pound, a pound and a half for the bucket. And uh, we got about 30 pounds here. Yeah, that's um that's respectable. So here's all our leftover wax. What we're going to do is we're going to dump it back in this bucket here and slap the lid on it. And if you're going to store your wax like this for any amount of time, you're going to want to make sure that you take this and you freeze it. Put the whole bucket in the freezer and freeze it because invariably there's going to be a little hive beetle down in there somewhere who's going to lay an egg and that egg is going to come a larva and it's going to just ruin the whole batch. So we'll stick this in the freezer overnight and that'll take care of that problem.